بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم ڈاکٹر فرح ناز فرام گورنمنٹ ڈگری سائنس کالج ملیر کینٹ دس از دا سیکنڈ پارٹ آف لیکچر نمبر ون ٹاپک از سیم فائٹوگرافک اسکیم اینڈ دس لیکچر ود بی بینیفیشل فار دا باٹنی اسٹوڈنٹس آف فرسٹ ایئر اینڈ سیکنڈ ایئر لاسٹ ٹائم وی ڈسکس اباؤٹ دا انفلورسنس اٹس ٹائپ flower main parts of flower types of flower sexuality sex distribution symmetry of the flower and position of the anusium okay now starting from the estivation estivation it is the mode of arrangement of the petals and sepals in bud condition divided into five types velvet estivation twisted imbricate vexilli and quincuitial estivation the velvet estivation when the petals and sepals are arranged closely side by side without overlapping examples are solanum albicule and prosopis juniflora twisted when the petals or sepals overlap one and other corolla of the turalba and hibiscus rosa sinensis are the examples imbricate estivation one petal or sepal is innermost and one is outer remaining alternate examples are acacia fistula poinciana pulcherrima vexillary estivation where the largest petal vexillum covers the two lateral veins which overlap the two smallest and the innermost petals known as keel examples are clitoria ternatia sisvania sisvan quincuitial estivation when the two petals or the sepals are inner two outer remaining alternate example is rosa indica Okay, now the slide showing the different type of estivations of corolla and calyx. A is velvet. In velvet estivation, no overlapping is takes place. B, twisted. Overlapping is there. The one sepal or the petal, it's one edge. It is outer, one is inner. Again, one is outer and one is inner. This type of estivation is known as twisted estivation. Number C is imbricate estivation in which the one petal or sepal it is completely inside. The both edges they are inner, and the other petal or the sepal both edges they are outer, remaining or alternate. Means one is inner, one is outer. One is inner and one will be outer. it is imbricate estivation queen quincuitial estivation in this type of estivation the two petals or the sepals are completely outside this is the one petal or sepal outside this is the second one it is outside and the two will be inner most see both edges they are inner here the both edges they are inner or one petal or sepals one edge it is inner and one will be the outer it is known as quincuitial type of estivation number e it is vexillary estivation vexillary estivation this type of estivation present in family papilionaceae and is from the papilionaceous corolla the outermost largest and the posterior most petal it is known as vexillum or standard the inner side two petals are present and these petals are known as wings whereas the inner side of the wing the two in innermost small petals they unite together and form a keel like structure okay talking about the union polysepalous condition polypetalous condition 
गेमोसेपलस कंडीशन गेमोपेडलस कंडीशन पॉलीसेपलस पॉली मीन्स फ्री वेन द सेपल्स आर फ्री पॉली पेटलस वेन द पेटल्स आर फ्री पॉली पेटलस कंडीशन गेमो मीन्स यूनाइट गेमोसेपलस कंडीशन वेन द सेपल्स आर यूनाइट और गेमो पेटलस कंडीशन वेन द पेटल्स आर यूनाइट द डाइग्राम शोइंग द दूरबा वाइट कलर फ्लॉर एंड द पेटल्स दे आर यूनाइट टूगेदर दिस कंडीशन इज गेमो पेटलस एंड द ग्रीन कलर कैलिक्स इट इज ऑल्सो दैपल दे आर यूनाइट टूगेदर दिस कंडीशन इज नोन एज गेमो सेपलस दिस पिंक कलर फ्लॉर इट इज बिंक रोजिया सदा बहार and the petals they are not united with one another the condition of petals known as pot polypetalous condition now the corolla shapes there are different type of corolla and we can easily recognize them on the basis of their shapes this is rosaceous corolla tubular corolla and rotate corolla this is papunicious corolla by libiate corolla it is cross shaped corolla cruciform corolla family brassicaceae or cruciferi mustard family this corolla showing the campanulate bell shaped structure and this fly, white flower it is funnel shape and we use terminology for this infundi buli form funnel shape and uh, the yellow color corolla is there this is ligulate corolla tongue like structure in family compositi or asteraceae this type of corolla is present talking about the duration of calyx duration of calyx means how long the calyx they are attached with the fruit or the flower on the basis of duration of the calyx divided into three types caducus deciduous persistent caducus means falling off early or prematurely it means that the calyx they fall early when the flower is premature example is argimon mexicana deciduous fall off after fertilization and the fertilization is takes place after fertilization the calyx they become detached from the flowers example is brassica campestris now number c persistent persistent means constant constantly attach present even in the fruit condition the sepals of the calyx is remain attached with the flowers and after fertilization when the formation of fruit takes place they still attach with that family solanaceae the key character of family solanaceae the presence of persistent calyx now here chilies they contain this green calyx this is at plant brinjal it contain green calyx lady finger it contain at the top green calyx rosa indica rosa indica contain this persistent calyx ambosium the male part the group of stamens it represents the third whorl of flower the stamens are male reproductive organs and the semen also known as microsporophylls the sterile stamens are called estaminodes function less stamens are known as estaminodes and we can observe the estaminodes in casia fistula stamens has three parts you already know about that the anther connective and filament now in this slide 
you can easily observe this is stamen the unit of endosium it contain anther connective and filament the both views the dorsal view and the ventral view this is cassia fistula and in cassia fistula small three staminodes are present these are functionless whereas the remaining are the fertile this is ts of anther ts of anther is a bilobed structure and contain the sac like structure and in this sac like structure known as the microsporangium microsporangium contain the microspores microspores are known as pollen grain the microspores they or the microsporangium it is surrounded by a layer is known as tapetum okay lobes of anther the anther contain maybe the one chamber or the two lobes one lobe or the two lobe anther with one lobe can easily examine in the china rose and dithecus monothecus when the anther with one lobe dithecus when the anther with two lobes the turalba is example now in this diagram you can easily observe the rainy structure or the kidney shape or the bean shape structure is present in monothecus it's monothecus one chambered anther whereas here it is the bilobed structure known as the dithecus structure of anther arrangement of anthers inserted uh, and exserted two types inserted when the stamens are hidden in corolla tube they are not exposed inserted inside these type of anthers are known as inserted for example here in the dura alba this is the corolla tube and the endosium male part it is inside the corolla tube can it's not exposed it is hidden it is inserted inside these type of anthers arrangement known as inserted can easily observe in the dura alba and pigeonia alba see this is pigeonia alba and these are the anthers or the stamens the stamens they are not projected out from the limits of petals exerted anthers projecting beyond the petals it means that they are exposed they are exposed they are not inserted they are exerted the examples are mynosopetuca and fionciana pulcherima so these are the petals and they are projecting out beyond the limits of the petals facing of anther the anther facing mainly divided into two types entros and extros entros means the anther facing inward of the side of the flower now see in this diagram entros this is anther anther is facing towards the central region towards the stigma its centripetal whereas in extros condition the anther they are projecting towards the peripheral region or towards the petal not towards the central region known as extros anther facing outward of the flower type of dehiscence of anther dehiscence means how the pollen release from anther now see the four types how the pollen is released from anther transverse dehiscence longitudinal dehiscence parietal dehiscence and valvular dehiscence transverse dehiscence in this the pollen releases away from the center of the unilocular anther example members of the malvesi family 
longitudinal dehiscence. Here, the pollen releases laterally or longitudinally, neither towards nor away from the axis. Example, datura. Poricidal dehiscence. In this type, the pollen releases from the apical or the distal region. Example, potato and in brinjal. Valvular dehiscence. In this type, the anther wall opens like trap doors from where the pollen releases. Example, berberries and leores. Now, in next slide, you can observe through the terms. Now, see the dehiscence of the anthers. It is transverse dehiscence. Transverse dehiscence. Here, this is longitudinal dehiscence lengthwise. It is so the vertical and horizontal dehiscence. Vertically and horizontally dehiscence. This is the apical polar dehiscence, poricidal and valvular through the trap door the pollens are released attachment of filaments to anther how the anther is attached with filament maybe the basifix dorsifix adenate versatile and pendulous basifix its name is indicated here if the filament attached at the base of anther known as basifixed the Duralba example dorsifixed the filament attached on the dorsal side example is hibiscus rosa sinensis adenate the filament attached whole length base to apex example is nilumbo versatile the apex of the filament attached at the back and can swing freely in all directions. Example, Oriza sativa. Pendulous, when the anther hangs loosely outside the flower. Okay. Now this slide, through diagrams, you can easily understand about the terminology. Basic fixed dot and uh, adenate dorsifix versatile and pendulous anther now the basic phase when this filament is attached at the base of anther basic phase adenate when the filament it's attached with the anther but it runs along the entire length of anther from base towards apex Dorsifix when the filament is attached at dorsal side of anther. Versatile when the filament it is attached the central portion of the anther and due to this condition it looks like seesaw and swings freely. Pendulous anther the anthers they are in hanging position. Length of stamens divided into two types didynamous and tetradynamous. Didynamous out of four stamens, two are long and two are short. Example is Osimum basilicum. Okay, now here the four stamens, two are long and two are short. The long stamens they are towards the outer side, and the small one they are present towards the inner side. Example is Osimum basilicum, tetradynamous condition, total six stamens, two outer, shorter, and four inner are longer. Now, this is tetradynamous condition, six. Total 6 number of stamens, 4 are elongated and they are inner 
and two are short and they are towards the peripheral region or the towards the outer side. The union of stamens cohesion Adelphi Syngenitious Synandry How the stamens they are unite together is known as cohesion Adelphus condition or Adelphi the filaments of filaments of stamens free and anthers are united is further divided into three types monodelphus diadelphus polyadelphus monoadelphus condition mono means one adelphus means bundle one bundle of stamen now see in this diagram 1a showing the monoadelphus condition in monodelphus condition the many stamens they are present in a form of one bundle or group they are free from each other but they are form of one bundle diadelphus two bundles of stamens where out of 10 stamens nine form one bundle and the remaining one the tenth one stamen will form another bundle example is clitoria in 1b the diadelphus condition and in this diadelphus condition the nine stamens they group together and the tenth one is remaining separately nine plus one two bundles of stamens diagram 1c polyadelphus condition more than two bundles they are present see in this diagram one, number one number two number three and number four four bundles of stamens example in seva pentandra syngenitious condition when the anthers lobes are united and the filaments are free when the anther lobes are united and the filaments are free known as syngenitious condition in diagram number two the yellow color anthers they are fused together whereas the filaments they are free from each other the family asteraceae or compositae contain this type of syngenitious stamens and the examples are tridex and helianthesanus synandry when the filaments and anthers are completely fused in diagram number three synandrous condition both the anthers and filaments they are fused together Cucurbitaceae family is a good example of synandry. Adhesion. When the stamens or the filament they are attached with the other floral parts known as adhesion. Divided into four types: epicephalous, epipetalous condition, epiphyllous, and gynostegium. Epicephalous condition. It means that when the stamens they are unite with the sepals. Example: Grevillea, silver oak, epipetalous condition. When the stamens they are attached with the petals, known as epipetalous condition, and found this type of condition you may observe in the Tura and Tridex. In this diagram. This is petal, and this one is the stamen. The stamen's filament is attached with the petals, known as epipetalous condition. If instead of petal, the sepal is there, and the filament is is attached with the sepal, known as epicephalous condition. Now the epiphyllous condition, the attachment of the stamen with the parient lobes. Example is asparagus. What is parient? If 
The calyx and corolla cannot be differentiated. The structure is there known as the perianth. In this diagram, the, this is asparagus and the this one is perianth. And the perianth, they are cannot be differentiated into the calyx and corolla. Only the one structure is there. No calyx, no corolla. Cannot be differentiated. But the filaments they are attached with the perianth known as epiphyllous condition. The next is gynostegium. Attachment of stamens with the stigma of gynosium. Example is Calotropis procera, family Apocynaceae. This is a beautiful diagram of Calotropis procera showing the gynostegium condition. This Calotropis procera it is commonly known and known as in Urdu ak plant. This is gynosium, this discoid structure, it is a stigma, it is a part of gynosium. And the five purple stamens are there and they are attached with the stigma of gynosium. That's why we use term here gynostegium. Gynosium or the mega sporophyll. This is LS of flower. Before to discuss about the more terminology, first you have to recall the memory about the LS of flower. This is the pedicel, stalk, receptacle, swollen portion. This one, these are the sepals, and the sepals they unite together form calyx. Now this blue color is petal, and the petals collectively known as corolla the third word it is known as stamens stamen it is the unit of endosium male part the stamen contain anther connective and filament and the innermost part it is gynosium the unit of gynosium is known as carpal or the pistil it contains stigma style and ovary inside ovary the ovule is present now this is the enlarged structure of pistil or carpal, it contains stigma, style, ovary, inside ovary, ovules are seen. Now, this one is known as carpal. Now, we are talking about the number of carpals. Monocarpillary, one carpal. Cisbania, cisban. Bicarpillary, two carpals. Solanum nigrum. Tricarpillary, three carpels, alien species. Tetracarpillary, four carpels, oinothera. Pentacarpillary, five carpels, hibiscus rosa sinensis. And multicarpillary, many carpels are there. Anona squamosa. Types of carpel. Carpels, they may be free or they may be united. Okay, carpels, they are many in number, as I mentioned in previous slide. And the many carpels, if they are free from each other, known as apocarpus, and syncarpus condition means many carpels, but they are united together. The carpels are united together, syncarpus condition. In the apocarpus, the carpels are free from each other. Now the examples Nilambo Lucifera, Lotus and the Rosa Indica is an examples of apocarpus condition and the syncarpus conditions examples are the Dura Alba and Petunia Alba. Now in this slide you can easily observe the syncarpus condition and the apocarpus condition. You can easily distinct them. Toy carpillary or the trilocular condition but they are united together in carpus condition now this one tomato and tomato contain this is a ts of ovary the two locules of the two chambers are there by carpillary but the two carpus they are united together sin carpus condition this is 
the fruit of the Duralba and this one is the TS of ovary of Hibiscus rosa sinensis. In this condition, you can easily observe the bilocular condition and sim together, unite together condition. Now the pentacarpillary, one, two, three, four, five carpels, but they are unite together. Syncarpus condition can easily observe in this slide. Now, apocarpus condition. Apocarpus condition, then the carpels are many. Carpels are many, but they are identical. They are free from each other. In lotus, in custard apple, in pineapple. These are the example of apocarpus condition. Now the numbers of locules in ovary. Unilocular, one chamber, bilocular, two chambered, trilocular, three chambered of ovary, tetralocular, four chambered, pentalocular, five chambered ovary. This black spot in ovary is known as placenta and these are the egg cells they unite with this central placenta and this one is ovary wall here this is placenta in the central region all the eggs or the ovules they are attached with the placenta for taking the nourishment okay placentation what is placentation Placentation means the, the position of placenta or position of ovule inside ovary. This is for example this is ovary and the ovules are attached to the ovary wall. So the position of ovule inside ovary it is known as placentation. Now further divided into many types, first of all talking about the marginal placentation, the ovary is unilocular means only the one chambered, unilocular and the ovules are on ventral suture. This is pisum sitivum. In Urdu it is known as mutter. It is unilocular, one chambered ovary. And inside ovary, the many seeds are present. These ovules or seeds, they are directly attached with the margin of the ovary wall. So, on the basis of the position of ovule inside ovary, is known as the marginal placentation. And this seed or the ovule it is attached with the ovary wall with the help of a small stalk that small stalk it is a connection between the ovary wall and the seed it is known as placenta the parietal placentation the placenta bearing the ovules on the inner wall of the ovary now these red colors ovules they are attached towards the peripheral region from the inner wall of the ovary example is cucumber cucumus sativus now see in this condition the seed the seeds it contain the small thread like structure known as placenta attached with the inner wall of ovary towards the peripheral region that's why it's a parietal placentation the exile placentation, placenta bearing the ovules develop from the central axis of the compound ovary. It's many carpels are there, compound ovary, many carpels, but the carpels they are seen together, united with one another. And this one is placenta. The ovules are attached from the central axis of the compound ovary. Example is hibiscus 
user synapses and in cocrazole. Now the free central placentation. Free central placentation unilocular ovary and the ovules are born on the central column without any septa. Dianthus example. This is unilocular ovary. Only the one chambered ovary. And ovules they are born in the central column, on the central column, without any septa, without any partition, known as free central placentation. Next is basal placentation, ovary unilocular, this is unilocular ovary, one chambered ovary, ovules born at the base, ovule is born at the base of the ovary. Examples are Tridex and Helianthus species. Next is superficial placentation. Now the ovary is multilocular, many chambered structure you can easily observe in this diagram. Multilocular, many locules or the chambers and the ovules develop all around the inner surface of the septa. Now these are the dotted structure shows the ovules. Example is Nymphia. This is an overview of the different type of placentations. Style. Elongated part of gynoecium and stalk like structure situated between the ovary and the stigma. It's known as a style. In this diagram you can observe the upper part it is known as a stigma long style and the ovule the oval structure is known as ovary so style it is connection between stigma and ovary types of style terminal lateral gynobasic terminal it arises from the apical part of the ovary diagram number a the terminal it arises from apical part of the ovary. Hibiscus is example. B or the second, it is lateral. Arises from the lateral side. This is ovary and the style is arises from the lateral side of the ovary. Example is Mangifera indica, mango, gynobasic style. Arises from the base of the ovary in between the four locules. See, this is base of ovary and it is tetralocular ovary. And at the base of ovary, the style is arises. At the end, it contains bifid stigma here. Example is Osimum basilicum, family Libiati, in which known as Miasbo. Okay, the slide showing the stigma. This is the tip of carpal stigma. A stigma may be capitate or the simple. Many type of stigmas are there. Now, see this is stigma, style and ovary. And the stigma is a uh, portion of the part of the female structure. It receives the male pollen grain. It is sticky in nature. And the pollen, they attach on a stigma. And after that, the pollen tube will form and fertilization is takes place. And this red color diagram shows the five stigmas. Velvety, maroonish, five stigmas. Okay. Stigma, uh, many types of stigmas are present. A few are, I'm discussing about few. Capitate, pulmos, linear, bifid. The capitate enlarged and the globular at the tip, no like end. This is capitate stigma, the feather-like stigma. 
is present in the family uh, grass family poesy or the gramini feather like pulmos stigma stigma maybe the sometimes the linear only the line is there stigma is very simple long and narrow stigma that this is bifid stigma trifid stigma discoid structure of stigma and dumbbell shape of stigma the funnel shape of stigma is there conclusion the plants are distributed on the land and adapted the various modifications and they are different from each other so they are easily identified on the basis of their specific characteristics the systematic botany the plants are mainly divided into the flowering and the non flowering plants we have to use the terminologies for the better understanding and identification of the plants these are the references thank you students we will continue again inshallah